So, and, well, yeah, you go. so we welcome the second panel. Um, so Daniel will be um, the leader of this panel. Sorry, everyone, I was just getting notes from Michael <laughs> about um, we should introduce the name Fairy Investors and Henry's as an acronym, which is high earning, not rich yet individuals. So there you go. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Danielle. Um, I'm part of the team behind Southstar. Uh, Craig, Jason over there. Uh, great to, to see you all here. Um, I have to say it's pretty overwhelming seeing you all here. Um, I don't know if anyone else is feeling a bit in the COVID headspace and liking their own company at the moment, um, but I definitely am. So it's great to be amongst you all tonight. Um, just for some short context, Southstar is uh, arguably uh, one of the leading technology and innovation events in the country. Um, we like to think so anyway. Um, it, we're gratefully supported by the government of South Australia and, and FIX. Um, and uh, as a bit of a, you heard it here, first announcement um, with, with COVID, obviously, um, have reconsidered our dates. Uh, so we're looking at February the 17th to the 19th next year. Um, and in the meantime, uh, pull out your calendars and you'll hear an announcement in the next few weeks about an event on November the 19th uh, that we're teaming up with our partners um, to deliver here at Stone and Chalk um, and some other exciting things around there. Um, a lot more comfortable behind the stage. My hand's a bit shaky, so anyway. But excited to introduce our panelists uh, here tonight. Now we have Judy Halliday, who is the, amongst other things, the, the Chief Operating Officer for the Office of the South Australian Chief Entrepreneur. Uh, now we have, there's a welcome, Judy. <laughs> We also have uh, David Rorsheim, who is the portfolio manager at the South Australian Venture Capital Fund, managed by Artesian Ventures. So a big welcome to David. <laughs> and we have Liana Reed, uh, who is a member at Southern Angels, but also is the chair of the South Australian Ag Tech Advisory Group, uh, amongst other things as well. So thank you for joining us tonight. Um, a lot of my work was done in the previous panel. Um, it was great to hear a conversation about um, the, the money that's hidden in the hills, as Craig would say, um, and talk about the health of our uh, ecosystem and investment scene here. Um, and I'm gonna continue to ride that wave. Um, we have strong representation here tonight um, from people who have a vast range of experience amongst venture capital, angel investment, uh, government grant funding. Um, so let's dive into that a little bit. Um, Leanne, Leanna, I might start with you. Um, I'd love you to introduce your role, um, particularly with uh, your Southern Angels hat on um, and how uh, you play a significant role in our ecosystem here in South Australia. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I've been involved in the Angel Group since it started. Uh, we started with Bio Angels back in 2002. Can you hear me? Yeah, it seems to be on. Okay. Uh, and uh, just recently, a year ago or so, we uh, transformed the Southern Angels, which expanded its effort. And uh, Josh Garrett's our executive officer over there. Uh, we don't hide under a bushel. I think we're out there. Uh, in the last year, we have assessed, I think, about 100 different companies. Uh, invested uh, in a total of seven, I think, over that time, and invested over a million dollars. So. These are, are all from high net worths in you know, your own investments uh, doing that. Um, Adelaide, of course, is a relatively small scene compared to, say, Melbourne in the Angel Network. Uh, but it's a very important one for reasons we'll probably discuss. Um, but I, I, I see things from both sides of the fence because I've also uh, founded a biotech company, TGR Biosciences. I chair a couple of um, early stage high growth companies, Carina Biotech and TechSite. Um, and... Uh, so I see that from that side of trying to attract capital and from the other side of that, and I'm also involved in, uh, I'm on the board of Uniseed, which is an early stage venture capital company. And on the government side of things, I get to what Brendan said about grants um, on the biotechnology um, uh, investment uh, fund, uh, biotech investment fund, 
which has awarded a number of venture capital fundings um, to existing venture capital funds. So uh, a whole range of things, apart from other things I do and uh, ag tech advisory and so forth. So uh, industry support systems. Um, I'm happily not in an executive position anymore. I love it. Um, so I get the chance to give advice and walk away. Thank you. Uh, David, I'd love you to introduce yourself and your role at SABCF. Uh, sure thing. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. I, I suppose I have to also confess to the joys of not being in an executive role right now. My last five years was running Uber in Australia, which was, was certainly a 24-7 job. Uh, but before that, I was schooled in venture capital in San Francisco, working with a fund named DFJ. They made super early stage bets. Frankly, those partners had already made a lot of money, so they're at a stage in life where they're only doing things that they thought would change the world. The byproduct of that was often that it also you know, made some money, but uh, it was a big eye-opening experience for me around you know, the, the sort of the right scale of ambition. If you're an internet company, you should think global because all of your competitors are thinking global as well. Um, I am now with the SA Venture Fund. That's not a new concept. It's a few years old. Um, the, you know, the government over the last few years has had a suite of initiatives to, to help the, you know, bring the startup ecosystem out of the, the dark ages, which were described by Flavia. Um, there's, you know, there's some, some support for the super early stages of business. The SA Venture Fund is there to help startups that, that have a product. It's, it's, you know, the idea has been created. It's not just a business plan. Um, you've potentially got a few customers that, um, that we can talk to and, and validate that it's, you know, it's a real product that has real customers and a real need. Um, and you're looking to expand maybe nationally, internationally um, and compete on that global scale. Um, it is a, it, it's a for-profit venture. It's not a grant program. Um, when the SA Venture Fund invests, it is, it is buying equity, just like any other venture capital fund. So we're mindful that you know, the best entrepreneurs have choices, they have options, and there's other venture capital funds they can take their money from. And um, you know, it's, it's my job and Shane and Alex's job to, um, to hopefully be the fund and the individuals that, uh, that the startups want to work with. That's, that's what we're up to. Thanks, David. Over to Judy. I don't think I can say that I've escaped executive roles, so I can't, but I can say that I have escaped from executive roles in startups, which is what I was doing before I started working with the South Australian government. Um, and so I'm the chief operating officer for the office of the South Australian chief entrepreneur within the Department for Innovation and Skills. And I'd like to shout out to the minister who's just sitting there. Good evening, minister. Nice to see you. Um, so the department uh, has carriage, the Department for Innovation and Skills has carriage of a whole bunch of things that are relevant for the startup ecosystem, including, you know, bringing Stone and Chalk here to run this fantastic startup hubs, establishing things like the Cyber Collaboration Centre, the South Australian Venture Fund, and a whole bunch of other activities that go on in, um, through the delivered basically through the office of the chief entrepreneur, including some early stage grant funding. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of things that are happening in South Australia and have been happening in the last few years that are designed to really shine the light on entrepreneurship and startups and the value and benefit that they bring to us as individuals, collectively as a, a community and to the world at large and to really also help people to start thinking about their businesses in a global context. Now, obviously, early stage investing is really, really important for South Australian businesses. And, and so we're really excited to see um, Southern Angels getting going with, you know, a whole bunch of really exciting things and investing in some of our uh, really interesting startups. Um, Innovation Bay has been mentioned and hopefully they'll, they'll get off the ground with doing some things post COVID, a little bit tricky to, to do stuff, although, as Danielle pointed out, there does seem to be a lot of us in the room together here today. <laughs> Is it? Are you Donald? <laughs> um, um, so, so, you know, I guess what I'm here to do is to talk about what we can do for startups and the ecosystem through um, things that are going on from the South Australian government's perspective. But I will also confess that I have been a founder in startups that have taken angel investments. So, I do have a track record and expertise in taking angel investment as a startup founder, both Australian angel investors and US angel investors. I might. Ooh, now there's a difficult question to answer. Some of those things are still, actually all of them are still a work in progress. I'm just not with them currently. 
I might just jump on that. What was your experience? Um, or what was the difference in experience at a personal level um, taking venture fund or taking angel investment and dealing with grant funding and, and looking into venture capital? Um, I know that with each of those different pathways at a personal level for many founders here tonight um, come different implications. Um, can you provide any comment on what those, if that difference was like? I, th I think in a very generic sense, angel investors are much more about, they'll come in usually earlier into your business when it's a little bit more risky, but they usually have very strong domain expertise and great networks specific for the thing that you're interested in. One of the, um, one of the businesses was actually an ag tech kind of business, I guess. So that, that's interesting. But the people that got involved were really interested, passionate, had connections to customers, would get in and roll their sleeves up and, and really work hard in the business with you. That's not to say that venture investors don't do the same thing, but angel investors are a bit more operational, I guess, whereas venture investors tend to be much more sleeves up, roll the sleeves up from a strategic perspective. They're all about how are we getting your business positioned to get as quickly as possible to some sort of exit event. Angel investors are also interested in an exit event, but they probably invest more personally, and this is a generalisation, in actually, you know, getting your business working, ironing out some of the early kinks, getting you ready for the next set of investors. A couple of the businesses actually did have angel investors and VC investors at the same time. David, do you have any comment to add to that in the difference between your approach um, through the SAVCF uh, compared to someone like Liana with Southern Angels, um, what might be some of the different considerations that you look at um, when just doing your due diligence and deciding whether to invest in a company? Um, how do they, how are they distinct from the angel pathway? There's going to be a bit of overlap. At the end of the day, they're both mm -hmm. buying shares in a company. Um, and along the journey, more likely that the angels are arriving early and they could either be someone that's passionate about this field or they could be someone with a lot of money who just wants to make some investments. Um, the probably what's going to be a little bit different is, you know, without disrespecting the amount of time and effort that, that angels put into an investment is there's probably going to be a bit more of a process with a venture capital fund, um, probably because there's more money attached to it as well. And they've got a board and they've got their own investors that also need to be satisfied that due diligence has been done. Some angel investors just investing their own money and they write their own rules and they can make decisions as fast as they want. Some of the angel networks are a bit more organized than that. So there'll be a bit more of a formal process, but I'd say the biggest difference between a venture fund and an angel fund is in general, more money from a venture fund and probably a little bit more forms to fill out, so to speak. 